Hi, this is Denise of Paper Crafty. And on today's Trash to Treasure Tuesday, I am taking a used flour sack towel and making some really cool ribbon for our junk journals. So let's get started. So to get started, I just want to show you what kind of flour sack towels I use. Um, I use these in my kitchen. Uh, I love these flour sack towels. They're really pliable and they're really absorbent. And um, I like that I can just bleach them and use them over and over again. Uh, these are absolutely fabulous. Um, I get mine either at Smart and Final or at Costco. And you know, they last for quite a while, but you know, after a little while, they do, you know, show some uh, staining, you know, even if you bleach them. Uh, and this is a clean one that, you know, I've put through the laundry. Um, but, you know, I, you know, I like them to look kind of nice. So um, when they get to be like this, uh, somebody probably cleaned up some coffee <laughs> with this um that when i get to this point i i just you know decide that i'm going to either you know use them for uh dusting or you know other cleaning around the house or i can make some really cool uh craft things so you know the way i start this is that i take and i just take these little edges off i I've discovered that I really love the torn edge look uh, of this 100% cotton uh, fabric. So I just take and I, you know, go ahead and remove all of the edges. And if you do it, <laughs> just get it started with some scissors. You can generally go all the way around the, uh, the towel without having to cut through this and sometimes you'll notice that it doesn't exactly follow the seam line you know sometimes they don't uh, uh, sew these on the square so you know it's it's perfectly fine um, when you do this it really does make it a little bit more uh, square and you're also left with this really cool kind of um, cord which is also really fun to use in projects. Um, so that's really cool too. So I generally like to make them about two inches wide and I'll just use my, uh, here's the, the measuring on my, on my mat and I'll just get it started at about two inches and I don't stress too much about, you know, perfect um, measurements, but I just like to get it started like that and I'll make a bunch of strips like this. For the most part, they kind of stick to about two inches. Okay, so you can see, you get this really lovely uh, edge on them and you can actually take some of the strings off and make it a more pronounced edge if you'd like. Um, it's really not necessary at this point, but I really see how pretty that looks. Just that texture that you get with that. Okay, and then I will take those. You know, you can use them just like this, um, but I often will take these to my sewing machine and I will, you know, just kind of sew two edges together like this and I just do it in a square pattern I kind of try to keep it flat you could do it just a single stitch across if you want you know make it a lot smaller it's you know it's entirely up to you you know and then I end up with something like this where I've got it you know sewn together like that and you can see I stitched it you know each of these strips together like that. And it makes a really nice kind of long uh, ribbon. And if you do them in uh, two inch width like this, it ends up being almost nine yards uh, for these, uh, when you use these uh, flower sack towels. If you make it a little bit wider, like I made this one uh, two and a half inches, then you end up with about six yards at the end. 
So what I do um, with this is I take some kind of plastic, like this is just from a, a croissant <laughs> box from Costco, and I'll just put this inside of here like this. Okay, so I just put on some blue rubber gloves and I do find that this really helps because, you know, these um, sprays and stuff can really soak into your fingers, especially if you have dry skin like I do right now. Um, and I'm just going to use a combination of some Distress Oxides, this blue, this orange, a little bit of walnut stain. And then this is just regular distress ink in vintage photo okay so i'm going to go ahead and i'm just going to just have fun you know spraying these a little bit in here and there's really no rhyme or reason you know you kind of want to um pick colors that are um you know that make something pretty and don't make mud <laughs> So when you put the blue and the orange together, you get a really lovely kind of green. So that's why I'm using these two colors. Anyhow, I'm just going to start spraying. And then what I'm going to do is add a little bit of coffee. And this is just coffee that was left over, um, you know, at the end of the pot uh, that nobody drank. So it's kind of like, you know, today's coffee <laughs> that no one's drinking. And I just add a little bit in there, just enough to wet it. And you can, if you don't want to use coffee, you could totally use um, just some water if you have that. That works really well. And I'm just kind of sopping up the extra like super duper wet um so it just takes longer to dry so i'm adding enough water to kind of you know get that oxidation oxidation happening okay and then i'm going to add a little bit of this vintage photo just regular distress ink and i'm just doing the same thing i'm just kind of you know holding it down partially so i get little droplets in places and a little goes a long way with this because it will um, wick out and then I'm just gonna go take and uh, it's um, a little bit sunny outside so I'm just gonna take this downstairs and let it dry and I'll be right back all right look at how cool this one turned out you really get some really cool color. I really love this. And I love the way, you know, you get a little bit of like the grunginess on the edges um, with the coffee. Get a little bit of that throughout here. This is so cool. Look at all these gorgeous colors. I just love this. I just love this. I think it's super pretty and it smells a little bit like coffee right now so you could air it out um if you don't like coffee then you know just don't add coffee to it um, you could just use the dyes but i really love the way this turned out i think it's really really beautiful i definitely use this in my journals on tags and could even take you know like a little snip off of it and tear 
this in half, you know, lengthwise to use in, on tags and stuff or use it the way it is. It's, I love it. I think it's really pretty. So many different applications for this. So I had made some earlier using those same colors and this one and this one I added a little bit more of the uh, coffee. I had a little bit more coffee left over <laughs> the day I did this, but you can just see how lovely this turns out. Look at this. And this is like nine yards of this really beautiful um, ribbon that's super nice and pliable and just gorgeous the way it is. You could stamp on this as well um, and just would make an absolutely lovely, you know, ribbon for a journal. It just makes an absolutely gorgeous uh, closure for a journal. I just, I love it. Especially for a nice grungy one. I just think it's super pretty. Okay. All right, so uh, maybe you don't have any um, sprays. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to try some uh, re-inkers. I'm going to start with some tumbled glass because that's super light. Just kind of add it in a few spots. Okay. And then maybe I'll do a little bit of broken china. Oof. All right. That one's coming out kind of fast. And let's do a little bit of this uh, cracked pistachio. I really love this color. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna start with that. I'm just gonna add some water to this. And this is, this should be a lot of color, <laughs> honestly. Um, these things are pretty potent. Might even add some, this is just water from the tap. Oh, look at that. They're kind of mixing a little bit. I don't want them to like totally mix, but I don't want them fully concentrated either. It's too much otherwise. Okay. So I'm gonna take this other one that I sewed, uh, sewed together and I'm just gonna kind of start dabbing these in here. And I still have some of the inks from previously. All right, these colors are all very, very similar. Maybe I should do one at a time instead of uh, all at the same time. All right, I'm gonna try a little bit of this chip sapphire just to get. All right, and I'm just gonna add a little bit, tiny little bit more. I'm gonna spread this out kind of over the whole bottom of this so that I get a little bit more coverage. Look at that. That's kind of cool. All right. Ooh, look at that. That's kind of cool. Look at all that blue getting in there. That's actually super cool. All right. And this cotton fabric, oh my goodness, it's just, it just soaks up this color. It is perfect for this. All right. I think I'm pretty happy with that and with these colors. I think they're really, really beautiful. Um, okay, so here is what the, uh, how the blue one turned out. I think this turned out really cool. I love these colors. Really, really beautiful. I just love that. And this is the thicker one that I did. So, you know, if you want a little piece that's smaller, you could kind of tear it down the middle. That's really cool. 
I love the way that turned out, especially this area like where it's really teal. I love teal. It's like my favorite color. All right, I'm going to use some new colors in here, so I'm just going to wipe this out with a baby wipe. So, this time around, I um, thought it would be fun to try just using, uh, doing a whole piece, dyeing a whole uh, piece in here, and then tearing it up afterwards. Um, you're going to get a slightly different look um, because the edges, you know, won't have that kind of grungy uh, look, especially if you add the coffee dye to it. But this is, uh, I'm going to use some fossilized amber. I'm going to add the lightest color first. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water. It seemed like this was the best way to kind of do it. Mm. Might have been too much water. Let's see. Nope. Actually, that's okay. I'm going to get it in these little grooves in here because it kind of gets some cool effects when you do that too. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of, I don't know, <laughs> mop it up, I guess, I don't know, all right. All right, and then I want to add some of this uh, rusty hinge. Ooh. Good. All right, I love these colors. All right, so this is what we have so far. Oh, it looks like it's kind of going in the same exact areas as the yellow, which is kind of interesting huh all right I add a little bit of the vintage photo it's really interesting so I'm getting like this it's getting in a lot of the same places which is kind of interesting to me interesting kind of almost tie-dye effect well it's not really tie-dye but it's it's cool looking I don't know I like it so all right I'm gonna dry that and let's see I want to dye this too it's just this little string piece and I'm gonna use the same colors but this time I'm gonna add a lot more water to it I'm going to go ahead and do this one too because I really like these colors and I'm thinking that I might just do more of a like a watercolory look on this one. Okay, so I've got more water. I'm just going to see if the color wicks a bit more. If I just add water and don't add more, um, yeah, you can see the water's, the color's kind of running now, which is good. So this is more of a little of a watercolory effect that you're getting, which is cool. I actually quite like that. That's really pretty. Here's how the yellow one turned out. This is really bright. I really like this. This turned out pretty cool, actually. I really do like the way this one turned out. Um, this is the way the other one turned out. 
and uh, yeah, kind of the same for this, like this where the brown came. I'm not super huge fan of, of the way that part turned out. So I might go over this um, with some brown ink, uh, just some distress ink. Um, but yeah, I really like the way these turned out and they're different, you know, they both turned out really different. Um, so that's really cool. And then I did this little part and I really love how vibrant this one came out. I mean, this just turned out so cool and that's gonna be super cool, just like in a tag. Can you see that on a tag? Wouldn't that be look, look awesome? I just love that. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this vintage photo distress spray. Uh, and see what I get. I'm, I'm not going to press down really all the way. I'm just going to do like a little, uh, yeah, kind of like that. So it looks better. I think that even the, this kind of washed out brown looks better if you have like a variation of colors going on, like some of the washed out, some of the kind of brighter. It just looks kind of cool that way. Okay. I don't want to get rid of all of the white space on here. I really like the white space. And I'm doing this on a dry piece, so it's not wicking, you know, as much. It's getting more of that splatter effect, which is kind of what I'm going for. that does it for that one pretty happy with that and I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut these down sew them up and then we'll see what we have at the end okay so here are the two yellows that I came up with um, and you can see the little bit of a difference you know this is the one where we added all the water and uh, this is really beautiful. It comes out there. I added some little um, smaller strips at the end. So I thought that would be fun just for tags and stuff. So you can kind of see how that uh, comes out. Um, and I just did a like a zigzag <laughs> stitch right here because it was kind of narrow. Uh, but you can see how this comes out. It's just so pretty. I mean, there's some darker areas. There's some lighter areas. But it's just absolutely gorgeous and I love all of the you know the the edges that are all you know frayed and stuff super cute super cool okay so that's that one um this is the one uh you know where we kept some of the white and I did go back after I had sewn this up and I added some uh, walnut stain in some areas um, just to kind of darken it up because I wanted something with a little more brown in it. Um, but I just love this. Look at how pretty this turned out. I mean, look at this variation of color. It's just, and look at that. It looks like it got, I don't know how that white part got there because I didn't use any oxides. So I don't know, it's a mystery, but very cool. Um, it looks oxidized, <laughs> uh, but this is just gorgeous. Let's remember this was the rust and the uh, fossilized amber uh, re-inkers that we used on this. And you can see some of the areas where I sprayed some of the darker um, walnut stain and stuff. So I love this area. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. It's just gorgeous. So anyway, those are those are the two of those. Um, I also just wanted to show you that I, you know, I didn't waste any of the ink. I sopped up some of the <laughs> some of the ink that was left over and got this really kind of light um, lemon color, which was really pretty. And you know, you you can even do this um, undyed. I mean, it's really pretty just like this. Uh, I didn't sew this one together, but uh, I have some ideas for what I want to do with this later, which will be a separate video. So, so you start off with something like this and you end up with, you know, something like this, which is just absolutely lovely. This takes dye really, really well. It's just 100% cotton. Um, you know, if you wanted to wash this uh, separately in the wash afterwards, just to 
um, you know, make sure you set uh, the the ink. You could put a little bit of vinegar and uh, and wash it in the washing machine. You'll probably get more of the um, cool uh, edges, which is would be really fun. Um, I'm sure any kind of dye would look at, would work in this. Um, we used in our instance distress inks. Um, you know, various distress inks. You could use paint if you wanted to. Um, acrylic paint might make it a little bit more um, stiff, uh, but if you use some translucent paints, you might get not get as much stiffness. Um, you could use, uh, you know, fabric dye. <laughs> I mean, writ fabric dye or whatever kind of fabric dye you have, of course, that would work. Um, you could use, you know, any kind of liquid ink uh, I have these splash inks that I got a while back. These are just acrylic colors, so they're like a, a dye color. That would probably work as well. Um, you could probably use alcohol inks, but I'm not sure how well those would spread on here. Um, you know, it would probably take a lot of of ink. If you're just doing a smaller portion, I'm sure alcohol inks would work just fine on here. Um, what else? Oh, I've heard of people using hair color for dyeing their papers. So I don't see why that wouldn't work on this as well. I mean, this is just a natural fiber. So it takes ink beautifully. So, you know, just so many different possibilities uh, with this. I'm, I'm super excited. I just love the way these turned out. Um, we started off with a... Uh, flour sack towel that I'd used in my kitchen that you know normally would be going in the garbage can because it was a little bit um, distressed and stained uh, I didn't want to continue using it there but you know adding different kinds of inks and stuff to it you know you get this really beautiful kind of variegated uh, distressed look to it I just I just love it. I think they turned out great. Um, this one is the one that I did the widest. I think. This yeah, this is between three and four inches. Some of the areas got to be quite wide. Um, this one I did at two and a half inches, or maybe two inches. Uh, and these I did at one and a half. They're a little bit narrower, but um, it's not hugely noticeable uh but i just love this i love that this has a little bit of brown in it you know and this one is just kind of more of the yellows the golds and the um the rust color and i i really love just the way this the intensity of this color um this little uh piece that was just the the edge around the the towel i just love the way that turned out i think it's so cool so those are a lot of fun. I mean, don't throw out your old towels, especially if you have the flower sack kind. They just really take ink great. Um, and it, you know, if they're a little bit um, distressed and stained, not a big deal because you know when we coffee dye and we dye things, that's kind of the age look we're going for anyway. I mean, we're just repurposing stuff, right? That's what junk journaling is mainly about: is you know, making beauty. Uh, finding beauty in things that most people would just kind of throw away. Um, and these have a lot of life left in them. So anyhow, uh, I hope that you found this uh, video inspirational. I hope you found these tips and tricks inspirational. I hope that you try this out for yourself. Uh, it's a very affordable way. Even if you don't use the tea towels uh, in your kitchen, <laughs> you can just uh, dye them and use them for crafting purposes. You get a lot of towels uh, in one package and um, and they're just a lot of fun to play around with. So, uh, so I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Uh, let me know that you're in, enjoying this, these uh, Tuesday series so I know whether this is something I should keep doing or not. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if you would like to see more content like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel. Again, this is Denise with Paper Crafty and Craft On.